three billion years ago, when our planet was not yet the blue planet. Lava from the gigantic eruptions of thousands of volcanoes poured into an enormous ocean, which was already inhabited by millions of primitive bacteria. They would be the victims of the first ecological disaster on Earth. A highly toxic element called oxygen began to filter into the water. The bacteria, unable to tolerate the presence of this new element, died. The disaster which struck these primitive bacteria was due to a revolutionary new function for life, photosynthesis. Through sunlight, molecules of carbon dioxide decomposed, liberating the residual oxygen. The primitive bacteria were incapable of surviving in this radically changed environment, and the numbers of the new photosynthetic bacteria rose inexorably. Over a period of thousands of years, oxygen transformed the biosphere of the Earth, gradually transforming the colors and chemistry of the environment, initiating a journey in the development of life forms leading to the present day. is a planet that supports life. This is its most essential quality. We share the planet with millions of species which struggle to find a space to survive, to feed themselves and to reproduce. From microscopic bacteria to the majestic blue whale, the catalog of living beings seems enormous. Yet it's merely a drop in the ocean compared to all the life forms that have populated the Earth throughout its history. Living beings, from the very beginning, have developed according to the conditions imposed by our planet. This has led to the emergence of incredibly complex organisms. The history of life on the Earth is a continuing story of newly adapted forms, which in many cases have foundered. But on the way, this experiment with chance has hit upon some formulas which increase the variety of its resources. The evolution of a genetic code, the development from cells with no nucleus to cells with differentiated organs, the leap from duplication to sexual reproduction, the complex organization of multicellular beings, or the development of human language. The most striking thing about this process of development of new ways of transmitting the information necessary to perpetuate life is that everything stemmed from one unique mysterious organism. Scientists have named this organism LUCA, the last universal common ancestor of all beings on our planet. It's the atom of scientific theory, a bacteria from which all the biodiversity which inhabits the Earth developed. This organism already came with the mechanisms essential to the promotion of life, metabolism, the ability to multiply, to undergo changes during this process, and to transmit these changes to future generations. What remains a mystery to us is its origin, how it was possible for life to emerge in the environment of the primitive Earth. Well, the answer is we don't know. And uh, uh, all that I would like to say about that is that these were chemical steps. That is, life is a chemical process. We understand life today in terms of the structures of, of molecules and of the interactions of these molecules, of chemical reactions. So life is a chemical process 
And so the origin of life must have been a long series of chemical steps leading to molecules of increasing size and complexity which interacted to make structures of increasing size and complexity until you got something that you could call a cell. And the first cells were probably uh, very, very primitive as compared even to uh, the bacteria of today. But slowly they evolved and uh, towards increasing complexity and uh, gave rise to what we call last universal common ancestor, LUCA. And that is probably a unicellular, bacteria-like organism, which is the ancestor of all life on Earth. The conditions which laid the way for the appearance of life on Earth began four billion years ago. At that time, the Earth was a hive of activity. The volcanoes gave off gases such as carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane. There were incessant meteorite showers. It's possible that one of these meteorites brought with it some of the ingredients for the prebiotic soup from which Luca would eventually emerge. The steam combined with the gases from the volcanoes to form the atmosphere and produce the first rainfall. Fierce hurricanes, prolonged downpours. To begin with, the drops of water evaporated as soon as they touched the scorching earth. But the rains eventually prevailed, the earth cooled, and the oceans were formed. The water from the oceans filtered through the cracks in the seabed and rose to the surface again through the craters, carrying deposits of the elements they encountered on the journey carbon, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus. This propitious mixture would convert the seas of the Earth into a fabulous soup of chemical compounds from which life would eventually emerge. A number of scientists have attempted to reproduce the recipe for this primal soup. The first modern theory of biogenesis was the work of a Russian biochemist called Alexander Ivanovich Opadin. At the beginning of the 20th century, the British scientist John Haldane, who was professor of genetics at the University of Cambridge, reached similar conclusions. Both of these scientists were convinced that the warm prebiotic pool developed in the Earth's oceans setting the scene for a long series of chemical reactions that eventually resulted in the first microbe. In 1953, a young graduate from the University of Chicago called Stanley Miller demonstrated to the world that Oprin and Haldane were right. The beginning of life was indeed the result of a chance chemical reaction. Miller thought that by reproducing the physical conditions of primitive Earth in a laboratory, it would be possible to synthesize organic molecules from inorganic matter. <laughs> 